The Tibesti Mountains are a mountain range in the central Sahara, primarily located in the extreme north of Chad, with a small extension into southern Libya. The highest peak in the range, Emi Kusi, lies to the south at a height of 3,445 meters (11,302 feet) and is the highest point in both Chad and the Sahara. Biku Bidi, the highest peak in Libya, is located in the north of the range. The central third of the Tibesti is of volcanic origin and consists of five shield volcanoes topped by large craters: Emi Kusi, Tarso Tun, Tarso Vun, Tarso Yega, and Tisade. Major lava flows have formed vast plateaus that overly Paleozoic sandstone. The volcanic activity was the result of a continental hotspot that arose during the Oligocene and continued in some places until the Holocene, creating fumaroles, hot springs, mud pools and deposits of natron and sulfur. Erosion has shaped volcanic spires and carved an extensive network of canyons through which run rivers subject to highly irregular flows that are rapidly lost to the desert sands. Tibesti, which means, place where the mountain people live, is the domain of the Tubu people. The Tubu live mainly along the wadis, on rare oases where palm trees and limited grains grow. They harness the water that collects in gueltas, the supply of which is highly variable from year to year and decade to decade. The plateaus are used to graze livestock in the winter and harvest grain in the summer. Temperatures are high, although the altitude ensures that the range is cooler than the surrounding desert. The Tubu, who first appeared in the range in the 5th century BC, adapted to these conditions and turned the range into a large natural fortress. They arrived in several waves, taking refuge in times of conflict and dispersing in times of prosperity, although not without intense internal hostility at times. The Tubu came into contact with the Carthaginians, Berbers, Tuaregs, Ottomans and the Arabs, as well as the French colonists who first entered the range in 1914 and took control of the area in 1929. The independent spirit of the Tubu and the geopolitical situation in the region has complicated the exploration of the range as well as the ascent of its peaks. Tensions continued after Chad and Libya gained independence in the mid-20th century, with hostage-taking and armed struggles occurring amid border disputes over the allocation of natural resources. The geopolitical situation and the lack of infrastructure has hampered the development of tourism. The Saharamontane flora and fauna, which include the rim gazelle and Barbary sheep, have adapted to the mountains, yet the climate has not always been as harsh. Greater biodiversity existed in the past, as evidenced by scenes portrayed in rock and parietal art found throughout the range, which date back several millennia, even before the arrival of Tubu. The isolation of the Tibesti has sparked the cultural imagination in both art and literature. Toponymy <inaudible> 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 The Tibesti Mountains are named for the Tubu people, also written Tibu or Tubu, that inhabit the area. In the Kanori language, Tu means rock or mountain, and Bu means a person or dweller, and thus Tubu roughly translates to people of the mountains, and Tibesti to place where the mountain people live. Most of the mountain names are derived from Arabic as well as the Tedega and Dazaga languages. The term EHI refers to peaks and rocky hills, EMI to larger mountains, ERA to craters and TARSO to high plateaus or gently sloping mountains. For example, the EHI Mausgu is a 2,849-metre stratovolcano near Tarso Vun. Likewise, ERA Kohor is a crater on top of EMI Kusi. The name Tisade means, that which killed the TOU, as in the Tubu, reflecting the danger of the still active volcano. The name of Bardai, the principal town in the range, means cold in Chadian Arabic, because of its low nocturnal temperatures. In the Tedega language, the town is known as Gumodi, which means red pass, signifying the color of the mountains at dusk. Geography <inaudible> 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 The mountains lie on the border between Chad and Libya, straddling the Chadian regions of Borku and Tibesti and the Libyan districts of Merzuk and Kufra, around 1,000 km miles north of N'Djamena and 1,500 km miles south-southeast of Tripoli. 
The range is adjacent to Niger and located approximately halfway between the Mediterranean Sea and Lake Chad, just south of the Tropic of Cancer. The East African Rift is 1,900 kilometers (1,200 miles) to the east, and the Cameroon Line lies 1,800 kilometers (1,100 miles) to the southwest. The range is 380 kilometers (240 miles) in length, 350 kilometers (220 miles) in width, and spans 100,000 square kilometers (39,000 square miles). It draws a large triangle with sides of 400 kilometers (250 miles) and vertices facing south, northwest, and northeast in the heart of the Sahara, making it the largest geologic area of the desert. It is slightly larger than the Massif Central in France, with which it shares some geomorphological characteristics. Topic: Topography. Topic: the highest peak in the Tibesti Mountains, as well as the highest point in Chad and the Sahara Desert, is the 3,445-metre Emi Kusi, located at the southern end of the range. Other prominent peaks include Pic at 3,296 metres 10,814 feet and the 3,012 metre 9,882 feet EHI Timi on its western side, the 2,972 metre 9,751 feet Tarso Yega, the 2,925 metres 9,596 feet Tarso Tiroko, the 2,849 metre 9,347 feet EHI Mausgu, the 2,845 meter, 9,334 feet, Tarso Vun, the 2,820 meter, 9,250 feet, EHI Sunni, and the 2,774 meter, 9,101 feet, EHI Yai near the center of the range. The 2,978 meter, 9,770 feet, Mauskorb, and the 2,812 meter, 9,226 feet, Kegger Turbi are two peaks notable for their height in the northeastern part of the mountain range. The 2,267 meter, 7,438 feet, Biku Bidi, the highest point in Libya, is nearby, on the other side of the border. The average elevation of the Tibesti Mountains is about 2,000 meters (6,600 feet). 60% of its area exceeds 1,500 meters (4,900 feet) in elevation. The range includes five shield volcanoes whose diameter can reach 80 kilometers (50 miles), with broad bases and the steepest peaks topped with large craters. Emi Kusi, Tarso Tun, which rises 2,575 meters (8,448 feet) above sea level; Tarso Vun, Tarso Yega, and Tarso Tsade, which culminates in the peak of the same name. Tarso Yega has the largest crater, with a diameter of 20 km 12 miles and a depth of approximately 300 m while Tarso Vun has the deepest crater, with a depth of approximately 1,000 m 3, and a diameter of 12 to 13 km they are complemented by four large lava dome complexes, 1,300 to 2,000 meters (4,300 to 6,600 feet) high and several km wide, all located in the central part of the mountain range: Tarso Tiroko, Ehi Yai, Ehi Mausgu, and Tarso Abeki, which rises to 2,691 meters (8,829 feet) above sea level. These volcanic complexes are now considered inactive, but according to the Smithsonian Institution were active during the Holocene. Tarso Tissade is an active volcano that has spewed lava over the past two millennia. Gases escaping from fumaroles on Tissade are visible when evaporation is low. The volcano's crater, Truo Natron, is 8 km miles in diameter and 768 meters feet deep. On the northwest side of Tarso Voon is the Soborum geothermal field, which contains mud pools and fumaroles that vent sulfuric acid. Sulfur and iron have stained the soil bright colors. Fumaroles are also present at the Yiyera hot springs on Emi Kusi. Tarso To was an active volcano in the early Holocene. The volcanic area of the Tibesti Mountains is located entirely in Chad. It covers about a third of the total area of the Tibesti Mountains and is responsible for between 5000 and 6000 cubic kilometers, 1200 and 1400 cu of rock. 
The rest of the Tibesti Mountains consists of volcanic plateaus Tarsos in the Tedega language, located between 1,200 and 2,800 meters 3,900 and feet elevation, as well as lava fields and ejecta deposits. The plateaus are larger and more numerous in the east. The 7,700 square kilometers (3,000 square miles) Tarso Emi Kai, the 6,500 square kilometers (2,500 square miles) Tarso Aozi, the 3,000 square kilometers (1,200 square miles) Tarso Ahan to the north of Emi Kusi, and the 1,200 square kilometers (460 square miles) Tarso Mohi. In the center is Tarso Orari at about 700 square kilometers, 270 square miles. To the west, in the vicinity of Tarso to Sade, are the small plateaus of Tarso To and Tarso Tamershu at 490 square kilometers, 190 square miles, and 98 square kilometers, 38 square miles, respectively. The plateaus are strewn with volcanic spires and are separated by canyons that have been formed by the irregular flow of wadis. The central part of the range is striated by a network of dry valleys with the north and east facing slopes silted by the prevailing winds. After the typically violent rains, these slopes form ephemeral streams and flora. The southwest slopes in the south and west of the mountain range have a gentle rise, while the northern slope of the range is a cliff overlooking the vast Libyan desert pavement known as the Sarir Tibesti. Hydrology. <inaudible> <inaudible> Topic. Five rivers in the northern half of the Tibesti Mountains flow to Libya and are part of the Mediterranean Basin, while the southern half belongs to the Indoric Basin of Lake Chad. However, none of the rivers travel long distances, as the water evaporates in the desert heat or seeps into the ground, although the latter may be carried great distances by subterranean aquifers. The wadis in the Tibesti are called Enaris. The water originates from the storms that periodically rage over the mountains. Their flow is highly variable. For example, the largest wadi, named Bartigwe or Ineri Zumeri on its upstream portion and located in the northern part of the range, recorded a flow of 425 cubic meters per second, 15,000 cu foot per second in 1954. Yet over the next 9 years it experienced 4 years of total drought, 4 years of flow less than 5 cubic meters per second, 180 cu foot per second, and 1 year where 3 different flow rates were measured, 4, 9 and 32 cubic meters per second, 100 40, 320 and 1130 cu foot per second. This variability is partly due to the irregularity of the monsoon that can bring rainfall from the southwest up to 20 degrees north latitude, but in some years may retreat before it reaches this latitude. Two other significant rivers cut into the mountains, the Ineri Yabij flows northward until its riverbed disappears on the Sarir Tibesti Plateau, while Ineri Tuawul joins the south flowing Ineri K to form Ineri Miski, which then disappears in the plains of Borku. Their basins are separated by an 1,800-metre high watershed that runs from Tarso Tiroko in the west to Tarso Mohi in the east. The Ineri Tijitinga is the longest wadi in the range, flowing some 400 kilometers (250 miles) southward. It forms in the west of the range and peters out in the Bodele Depression, as does Ineri Miski a little further to the east, along with other wadis such as the Ineri Koram and Ineri Ayui. The Ineri Dawangre also flows southward. The Ineri Torku and Ineri Ofoundawi lie to the north, the Ineri Uri, Ineri Bainam and Ineri Modaunga are in the east, the Ineri Yo, Ineri Mamur, Ineri Dao, Ineri Waudawi and Ineri Dus are to the west. Several rivers flow radially on the southern slopes of the Emi Kusi before seeping into the sands of Borku and then re-emerging at escarpments up to 400 km miles south of the summit, near the Enidi Plateau. At the bottom of many canyons are gueltas, wetlands that accumulate water mainly during storms and which can last most of the year. Above 2,000 meters 6, feet, inary beds sometimes contain sequential pools of water that remain largely unexplored. The water is replenished several times a year during flooding, and salinity levels are low. The Mare de Zawi is a small permanent body of water 600 meters 2000 feet above sea level, located in the northern part of the mountains in the wadi of the Ineri Bartigwe, 10 kilometers 6.2 miles north of Bardai. 
supplied by sources upstream of the wadi, in heavy rains it overflows and spills into small wetlands. The Yiyera Hot Springs is located on the southern flank of Emi Kusi, at about 850 meters (2,800 feet) elevation. Water emerges from the springs at 37 degrees Celsius degrees Fahrenheit. A dozen hot springs are also located at the Soborum geothermal field on the northwest side of Tarso Voon, where water emerges at temperatures ranging between 22 and 88 degrees Celsius 72 and 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Geology <inaudible> <inaudible> The Tibesti Mountains are a large area of tectonic uplift that, according to contemporary theory, resulted from a mantle plume in the craton of the African lithosphere, which is about 130 to 140 kilometers (81 to 87 miles) thick. This tectonic uplift may have been accompanied by the opening and subsequent closure via subduction of a rift zone. The heart of the Tibesti is composed of schist, basalt and diorite of the Ediacaran period, one of six exposures of Precambrian crystalline rock in North Africa. These are overlaid by sandstone of the Paleozoic era, while the peaks consist of volcanic rock. The continental hotspot activity began as early as the Oligocene, although the basalt in the area dates primarily from the Miocene to the Lower Pleistocene and, in places, to the Holocene. Due to the comparatively slow movement of the African plate, between 0 and 20 mm 0 and 0 .8 in per year since the Oligocene, there is no relationship between the age of the volcanoes and their dimensions, geographic distribution or alignment, similar to the Hawaiian Emperor and Cook Austral Seamount chains. This phenomenon is also seen in Martian volcanoes, particularly Elysium Mons. The volcanic activity has created trap basalt formations that extend tens of kilometers and stack up to 300 meters 1, feet thick. A system of regional faults, although partially obscured by the volcanic product, has two distinct orientations, a NNESSW alignment that could be an extension of Cameroon Line, and a NNWSSE alignment that could extend to the Great Rift Valley. However, the relationship between these fault systems has not been conclusively demonstrated. More recently in geologic time, the volcanic activity has deposited dacite and ignimbrite, as well as trachyte and tracheadsite. This trend towards the production of more felsic, viscous lalas could be a sign of a waning mantle plume. The volcanic activity took place in several phases. In the first phase, uplift and extension of the Precambrian basement occurred in the central area. The first structure to be formed was probably Tarso Abeki, followed by Tarso Tamershu, Tarso Tiroko, Tarso Yega, Tarso Tun, and Ehiye. The product of this early volcanic activity has been completely obscured by later eruptions. In the second phase, the volcanic activity moved north and east, forming Tarso Orari and the ignimbrite bases of the vast Tarsos, as well as Emi Kusi to the southeast. Thereafter, during the third phase, the outpouring of lava and ejecta deposits increased from Tarso Yega, Tarso Tun, Tarso Tiroko, and Ehiye. The collapse of these structures formed the first calderas. This phase also saw the formation of the Baunai Lava Dome and Tarso Voon. To the east, the lava flows formed the large plateaus of Tarso Emi Kai, Tarso Ahan and Tarso Tun. Emi Kusi increased in height. The fourth phase saw the formation of Tarso Tisade and the lava flows of Tarso To in the west, the collapse of the caldera on the summit of Tarso Voon and associated ejecta deposits in the center, and the decline in lava production in the east, with the exception of Emi Kusi, which continued to rise. The end of this phase coincided with the beginning of the Holocene. The Uruguay volcano emitted pyroclastic ignimbrite up to 50 kilometers 31 miles in all directions, filling in valleys. In the fifth phase, volcanic activity became much more localized and lava production continued to wane. Calderas form on top of Tarso Tisade and Emi Kusi, and the lava domes Ehi Soso and Ehi Mausgu appeared. Finally, in the sixth phase, Pic Tisade formed on the western rim of several pre truo natron calderas, along with new lava flows, including Timi on the northern slope of Tarso Tisade. With scarce time for erosion, these lava flows have a dark, youthful appearance. The true O Natron and Dune Kidimi craters have formed even more recently, with the former dissecting the earlier Tisade calderas. Lava flows, minor pyroclastic deposits, and the appearance of small cinder cones, and the formation of the Ara Kohor crater are the most recent volcanic activities on Emikusi. 
Presently, there are reports of volcanic activity in various parts of the massif, including hot springs at the Soborum geothermal field and fumaroles on Tarso Voon, Yi Yera near Emi Kusi and Pictisade. Deposits of sodium carbonate in the Truo Natron and Era Kohor craters reflect recent events, as does the formation of volcanic centers on the floor of Truo Natron. The study of fluvial terraces has revealed coarse sand and gravel alternating with terraces of silt, clay, and fine sand. This alternation highlights repeated changes in the dominant fluvial or wind patterns in the valleys of Tibesti during the Quaternary period. The phases of erosion and sedimentation are indicative of the climate alternating between dry and wet conditions, the latter of which fostered dense vegetation in the Tibesti that was likely far more diverse than that which exists today with the exception of grasses. Furthermore, the discovery of calcified charophyta particularly of the family Characeae and gastropod fossils in Truo Natron indicates the presence of a lake at least 300 meters 1000 feet deep during the late Pleistocene. These phenomena are associated with various changes in climate, most notably during the last glacial maximum, which increased precipitation and reduced evaporation due to lower temperatures. In fact, the Tibesti supplied a considerable amount of water to the Paleolake Chad until the 5th millennium BC. Topic: Climate. The Tibesti climate is substantially less dry than that of the surrounding Sahara Desert. Rainfall events are more intense and more frequent, but they are also highly variable from year to year. Indeed, the Tibesti can see seven to eight years pass between storms. In the south of the range, this variation is largely due to oscillations of the Intertropical Convergence Zone which steadily moves northward toward northern Chad from November until August, accompanied by the humid monsoonal air. Normally, the ITCZ repels the Harmattan, a dry trade wind that blows southwest from the Sahara Desert, and brings rainfall to southern Tibesti. However, sometimes the front retires early, before reaching the Tibesti, resulting one or more years of drought. In the northern Tibesti, where the monsoon has little influence, storms are caused by Sahara Sudanese weather systems. For example, between 1957 and 1968, Bardai saw an average of 12 mm of precipitation annually, although some years were dry while others saw 60 mm of rainfall. In general, the range receives a little less than 20 mm of rainfall per year. However, at elevations above 2,000 meters 6, feet, average precipitation exceeds 100 to 150 mm to in per year. When the rainfall coincides with low temperatures, it can fall as snow. This occurs, on average, once every seven years. The average maximum temperature is 30 degrees Celsius 86 degrees Fahrenheit at lower elevations and 20 degrees Celsius 68 degrees Fahrenheit in the highlands. The average minimum temperature is 12 degrees Celsius 54 degrees Fahrenheit in the valleys but only 9 degrees Celsius 48 degrees Fahrenheit on most plateaus, and it can drop to 0 degrees Celsius 32 degrees Fahrenheit on the highest peaks in winter. Lows of minus 10 degrees Celsius 14 degrees Fahrenheit are not uncommon. Bardai, located in a wadi 1,020 meters 3,350 feet above sea level, experiences average temperatures ranging between 4.6 and 23.7 degrees Celsius 40.3 and 74.7 degrees Fahrenheit in winter, between 14.4 and 34 degrees Celsius 57.9 and 93.2 degrees Fahrenheit in spring, and between 19.4 and 36.7 degrees Celsius 66.9 and 98.1 degrees Fahrenheit in summer. At Zuur, temperatures can rise to 44 degrees Celsius 111 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer and drop below 0 degrees Celsius 32 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter, and can fall to minus 19 degrees Celsius minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit on the surrounding plateaus. <laughs> Flora and fauna the Tibesti Mountains are part of the Tibesti Jebel Uwainat Montane Zirik Woodlands ecoregion, which covers 82,000 square kilometers (31,700 square miles). Topic: Flora. Topic: 
The flora in the Tibesti is Saharamontane, mixing Mediterranean, Sahara, Sahel and Afromontane vegetation. Biodiversity and endemism levels are much higher in the Tibesti than in the Air Mountains or the Ennity Plateau, although the vegetation's coverage is highly dependent on rainfall. A number of oases lie along the courses of the Enaris such as Inari Yabij, which is virtually unexplored. These oases, which are more numerous to the north and west of the range, have vegetation of the genera Acacia, Ficus, Fig trees, Hyphene and Tamarix. Most gueltas are lined with macrophytes including Cypress lavagatus, Aquisitum ramosissimum, Juncus fontanesi and Serpus holoshanus. Acacia nilotica grow near these water basins. Myrtus nivellae and Nerium oleander grow between elevations of 1,500 and 2,300 meters (4,900 and 7,500 feet) in the western part of the range, while Tamarix nilotica grow at similar elevations in its northern part. Downstream, where the current of the Enaris is slower and the riverbed is deeper, there are dense thickets of Tamarix aphila and Salvadora persica, locally known as Yi. Around the edge of the Tibesti, where the canyons exit the range, are dome palms the Beka, known locally as Sobu. The banks of Mare de Zawi are home to dense stands of reeds Phragmites australis and Typha capensis, along with Serpoides holoshanus, Juncus maritimus, Juncus bufonius and Aquisitum ramosissimum, while species of pond weed grow in the open water. Although the lake appears rich in phytoplankton, it has not been thoroughly studied. To the south and southwest of the range, between 1,600 and 2,300 meters (5,200 and 7,500 feet) elevation, the wadis support endemic Ficus salicifolia as well as woody species characteristic of the Sahel: Balanites egyptica, Boschia salicifolia, Cordia sinensis, Ficus ingens, Ficus salicifolia, Ficus sycomorus, Fluge virosa, Gruia tenax, Gymnosporia senegalensis, R. H. Usingkana, and also Senegalia lyta. Chrysopogon plumulosus is the most common Poaceae in the area. Other plants have more Mediterranean characteristics, such as Globularia alipum and Lavandula pubescens or the more tropical Abutilin fruticosum and Rhynchosia minima. Saharamontane grasslands are found on the slopes, plateaus and the upper portions of the wadis at elevations between 1,800 and 2,700 meters 5 and 8 feet. They are dominated by Stipagrostis obtusa and Aristida carulescens, as well some Aragrostis paposa locally. In addition, shrubs represented by Anabasis articulata, Fagonia flamandi and Zilla spinosa dot this environment. On the sheltered upper slopes of Emi Kusi is the endemic grass Aragrostis cohorica, named after the volcano's crater. The vegetation above 2,600 meters (8,500 feet) consists of dwarf shrubs, which are generally limited to 20 to 60 centimeters (7.9 to 23.6 in) in height and do not exceed one meter. The shrubbery consists of the species Pensia monodiana, Artemisia tilhoana, and Ephedra tilhoana. Finally, at the highest elevation elevations of the Tibesti, tree heath Erica arborea grows from moist crevices formed by early lava flows, and 24 different species of moss provide substrate for the tree heath. Fauna <laughs> 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 The large mammals present in the ecoregion are the Attix, Attix nasomaculatus, Barbary sheep, Amotragus lervia, Dorcas gazelle, Gazella dorcas, and Rim gazelle, Gazella leptoceros. However, rodents are the most represented order of mammals in the Tibesti, and include the Agag gerbil, Gerbilus agag, Baluchistan gerbil, Gerbilus nanus, Cairo spiny mouse, Acamis cahirinus, Lesser Egyptian gerboa, Jaculus jaculus, Libyan gerd, Marionnes libicus, Mzab gundi, Masutiera mzabi, and the North African gerbil, Gerbilus campestris. Also present are cats such as the African wildcat Felis silvestris libitsa and, more rarely, the caracal, caracal, caracal and the Sudan cheetah Asinonyx jubatus somarangi, as well as several canine species including the Egyptian wolf Canis anthus lupaster, fennec fox Vulpes zerda and rupal's fox Vulpes rupalii. The striped hyena, hyena, hyena may also occupy the range. There may be as many as 50 endangered painted hunting dogs Lycon pictus in the Tibesti, although some regard these relict populations as extirpated, partially due to the Darfur refugee turmoil and other Sudan-generated conflicts. 
Bats are heavily represented in the Tibesti, including the desert long-eared bat Otonicteris hemprici, greater mouse-tailed bat Rhinopoma microphyllum, Hamilton S tomb bat Taphosus hamiltoni, Mauritian tomb bat Taphosus mauritianus, and the trident bat Acelia tridens. The Cape Hare Lepus capensis, Desert Hedgehog Parachinus ethiopicus, Olive Baboon Papio anubis, Rock Hyrax Procavia capensis, and the Saharan Striped Polecat Ictonyx libica also populate the area. Reptile and amphibian fauna is poor in the Tibesti range. There are gecko populations, including the Algerian sand gecko Tropiocolotes studenari, northern sand gecko Tropiocolotes tripolitanus, Rigazzi's fan-footed gecko Tiodactylus rigazzi, ringed wall gecko Tarantula annularis, and yellow fan-fingered gecko Tiodactylus hazelquisti. Snake species include the braid snake Caluber rotorachis, horseshoe whip snake Hemorrhois hippocrepus, long-nosed worm snake Leptotyphlips macrorhynchus, and the Saharan horn viper Cerastes cerastes. Among the lizards are Bell's dab lizard, Euromastix acondonora, Bibron's agama, agama impalaris, the desert monitor, Varanus grisius, red spotted lizard, Messalina rubropunctata, and the sandfish, Cincus cincus. Many birds can be found in the Tibesti, as they nest or shelter there during migrations. These include the Abyssinian roller, Corossius abyssinicus, African black duck, Anas sparsa. Anteater chat, Myrmecosicla ethiopes. Bar-tailed lark, Amomanes cincturus. Barbary dove, Streptopelia risoria. Barbary partridge, Alectris barbara. Barn swallow, Hirundo rustica. Black crake, Amorornis flavorostra. Black start, Circumla melanura. Blue rock thrush, Monticola solitarius. Brown-necked raven, Corvus ruficollis. Cape teal, Anas capensis. Common bulbul, Pycnonotus barbatus. Common chiffchaff, Philoscopus colibida. Common kestrel, Falco tinunculus. Common moorhen, Gallinula chloropus. Common quail, Coturnix coturnix. Cream-colored courser, Cursorius cursor. Crested lark, Gallerida cristata. Crown sand grouse, Terracles coronatus. Desert lark, Amomanes deserti. Desert sparrow, Passer simplex. Desert wheat ear, Oenanth deserti. Eastern olivaceous warbler, Aduna pallida. Egyptian nightjar, Caprimulgus egyptius. Egyptian vulture, Neofron percnoteris. Eurasian stone curlew, Berhynus edignemus. Fan-tailed raven, Corvus ripidurus. Fulvus babbler, Turdoides fulva. Greater hoopoe lark, Allimanolotopes. Greater short-toed lark, Calandrella brachydactyla. Helmeted guineafowl, Numida meleagris. Hottentot teal, Anas hottentata. Lanner falcon, Falco biarmicus. Lappet-faced vulture, Torgos tracheliotus. Laughing dove, Streptopelia senegalensis. Liechtenstein sand grouse, Terracles liechtensteini. Little owl, Athene noctua. Northern wheat ear, Oenanth oenanth. Nubian bustard, Neotis nuba. Pallid swift, Apis pallidus. Pygmy sunbird, Anthretis platyrus. Red-billed teal, Anas erythrorhynchus. Rock dove, Columba livia. Rock martin, Tyanopron fuligula. Rufous-tailed scrub robin, Erythropygia galactotes. Ruppel's warbler, Sylvia rupelli. Sand martin, Riparia riparia. Southern gray shrike, Lanius meridionalis. Spotted sand grouse, Terracles senegalis. Strilated bunting, Emberis astriolata. Subalpine warbler, Sylvia cantilens. Sudan golden sparrow, Passer luteus. Tawny eagle, Aquila repax. Trumpeter finch, Buccanetes githogenius. Turtle dove, Streptopelia tertor. Western yellow wagtail, Motacilla flava. And the White crowned wheat ear, Oenanth leucopiga. Fish survive in some rivers by gathering in gueltas during drought. The main species are Barbus anema, Barbus aplorogramma, East African red finned barb, Barbus deserti, Various Borrelius species, Clarius garaepinus, African sharp toothed catfish, Coptodon zilii, Red belly tilapia, 
Labioinectins, Labio niloticus, Nile carp, Labio parvus, Labiobarbus batesi, and Cerothrodon galileus, Mango tilapia. Topic: Population. Topic. The principal settlements in the Tibesti are Bardai, Auzu and Zuur, respectively located in the center, north and west of the range, and each situated on oases along the Enaris. Bardai, at an elevation of 1,020 meters 3,350 feet, is the capital of Chad's Tibesti region with around 1,500 inhabitants. It is connected to Zuur by a track that crosses Tarso to Sade. The village of Omchi is accessible from Bardai via Adarke, or from Azu via Erbi. These rough tracks extend southward towards Yebi Soma and Yebi Bo, and then follow the course of Ineri Miski. The eastern half of the Tibesti is cut off from the western half, as the eastern village of Aozi is accessible from Libya via Ori. Zuur has an airport, as does Bardai at Zugra. Bardai also has a hospital, although the medical supply is very much dependent upon the prevailing political situation. In the early 1980s, the population of the Tibesti Mountains was estimated to number 8,000 which was dispersed among the interior valleys, outer slopes and plateaus. Around a quarter of the population was located around Zuur, 18% in the center and in the northeastern valley of the Ineri Bardagway where many palm trees are cultivated, 16% in the north around Auzu and the valley of the Ineri Yabij, and 7% on the plains. The remaining third of the population was dispersed among the Tarsos. The vast majority of the population is Teta, one of the two ethnicities of the Tubu people. However, some clans are Daza, the other Tubu ethnicity, who left their traditional homes in the lowlands to the south and moved north to the Tibesti. The Tubu, in general, are semi-nomadic and live primarily in northern Chad, but also in southern Libya and eastern Niger. The Tubu language has two main dialects, Tedega, spoken by the Teta, and Dazaga, spoken by the Daza. Despite their cultural proximity, the two Tubu groups do not identify as a single ethnic group. The Tubu elect a chief, the Derde, from the Tomagra clan, although never from the same family consecutively. The Derde resides in Zuur and aims to impose religious and judicial authority over the Tibesti population, however, efforts toward executive cooperation and war alliances are usually destined for failure. The descendants of previous Derde retain authority which transfers from father to son. These appointed Mena govern portions of the Tubu territories. Individual clans rarely have more than a thousand members and are quite dispersed throughout the Tibesti. Tubu life is punctuated by the seasons, divided between animal husbandry and agriculture. In the palm groves, some Tubu still live in traditional round huts built with stone walls bound by mortar or clay, or built from clay or salt blocks, with roofs of simple branches arranged in a dome shape. In the highlands, the buildings are built of stone, forming circles 1.5 meters 4 feet 11 in, in diameter and 1 meter 3 feet high, which serve as shelters for goats, or as granaries, or as human shelters and defense structures. In other cases, the tubu live in tents that can be easily moved between the fields and the palm groves. History Topic. Human settlement Topic. There is evidence of human occupation of the Tibesti dating back to the Stone Age, when richer paleovegetation facilitated human habitation. The Tubu settled in the region in the 5th century BC and established trade relations with the Carthaginian civilization. Around this time, Herodotus portrayed the Tubu, which he labeled, Ethiopians because of their skin color, and described as having a language akin to the cry of bats. According to historian Raphael Jord, a Roman traveler and diplomat named Julius Maternus explored with the king of the Garamantes the territory of the Tibesti Mountains, while this king did a military campaign or a razia. Against rebellious subjects in the region at Agisimbane the 12th century, the geographer Muhammad al-Adrisi spoke of a country of Zaghawa Negroes or camel herders, that had converted to Islam. The historian Ibn Khaldun described the Tubu in the 14th century. In the 15th and 16th centuries, al-Makrizi and Leo Africanus recognized the country of the Berdoa, 
That is to say Bardai, the former associating the Tubu with the Berbers and the latter describing them as Numidian relatives of the Taurig, the Tubu settled in the Tibesti in several waves. Generally, newcomers either killed or absorbed the previous clans after battles that were often both long-lasting and bloody. The Teta clans, considered indigenous to the area, were first established around Inari Bartagwe. Namely, these clans were the Serdagua, Zuya, Kaseta nicknamed Yobat or Hunters of Well Water, and possibly the Edergwia, although the Edergia's origin may be Zaghawa and only go back to the 17th century. These clans controlled the palm groves, and made a peace pact with the Tomagra, a nearby clan of camel herders who practiced gauze. It was upon the agreement to this pact at the end of the 16th century that power was consolidated under the Derde, the principal regulator of the clans, whose appointment is always made from the Tomagra clan. There is evidence of early Daza settlements in the Tibesti, however, these early clans the Goga, Kita, Turbuna, and Obakina were assimilated into later Daza clans, who arrived in the Tibesti between the 15th and 18th centuries, having fled the Kanem Bornu Empire in the southwest after the Tubu allied with a Kanem enemy, the Balala. These later Daza arrivals include the Arna Suinga in the south, Goboda in the center west, Chioda and Dersina in the west, Tarama in the northwest and center east, and the Derdakichia, literally, descendants of the chief, the products of a union between an Arna Suinga and an Emauya in the north. The Tibesti then played the role of an impregnable mountain stronghold for the newcomers. Meanwhile, constant migration between the north and southwest of Chad, along with significant mixing of the populations, forged a significant degree of cohesion among the Tubu ethnicities. Periods of territorial expansion in the 10th and 13th centuries and periods of recession in the 15th and 16th centuries likely coincided with more or less pronounced wet and dry periods. Several clans with traditions similar to those of the Donzas of the Borku region, south of the Tibesti, settled in the range in the 16th and 17th centuries. These include the Karesa and Odabaya in the west, Foktoa in the northwest and northeast, and Emauya in the north. Several other clans, the Mogadi in the west, Turantar in the north, Tazoba in the center, and Tegua and Mata in the south are originally clans of the Bidiyat people who immigrated from the Enidi Plateau, southeast of Tibesti, around the same time. The Mata, however, have since largely emigrated to Borku, Kaur, and Kanem. The early 17th century also saw the arrival of three clans from the region of Kufra to the northeast. The Tezera settled in the plateau in the center and west of the mass, probably fleeing the Arab push into present-day Libya. They were initially rejected by the Daza clans and lived in isolation until they began investing in the oases by planting numerous palms. The Mahadina occupy the northeast quarter of the range and are likely from the Cyrenaica and Jalu regions and thus related to the Mogaba Arab tribes, although an alternative hypothesis is that they are of Bidiyat origin. Following years of conflict, a branch of the Mahadina clan, the Fortina, withdrew to the western margin of the Tibesti. The Fortina Mato, Red Fortina, settled there, while the Fortina Yasko, Black Fortina, pushed further west to Kaur. The Tuareg people intermixed with the Tubu clans, especially with the early Goga clan, which produced the Goboda, and with the later Arna clan, which produced the Mormaria. In both instances, the new clans were placed under the authority of suzerain clans of the traditionally feudal Tuareg, although they were eventually assimilated into the Tubu majority. However, the Tuareg have not entered the Tibesti since the signing of a peace treaty that included mutual recognition of Tubu and Tuareg territories. The treaty was reaffirmed in 1820. <laughs> Regional relations and colonization Topic. The Ottoman Empire came into contact with the Tubu in 1560. Their relationship broke out into conflict in the late 17th century, with the Turks favoring the authority of local Mena at the expense of the authority of the Derde. In 1780, the Derde initiated an attack against the Ottomans. The Ottoman retaliation killed 60% the Tubu population. The Teta then began launching attacks on Turkish caravans in an effort to disrupt Ottoman trade. In 1890, Mai Gedi Chanimami established diplomatic relations with the Ottoman Empire and began receiving firearms. Meanwhile, Derde Chichai allied with the Senussi Arabs and agreed that the southern half of the Tibesti could serve as a fallback base for the Senussi in their struggle against the French colonial army. The Tibesti was then effectively spit to, with the pro-Mai in the southwest and the pro-Derde in the northeast. 
With the Derde's blessing, the Senussi founded a Zaviyya in Bardai, which quickly promoted the total Islamization of the Tibesti. At the outbreak of the Italo-Turkish War, the Senussi allied with the Ottoman Empire and, at the request of the Derde, the Turks established garrisons in Tibesti beginning in March 1911. These garrisons fell apart a few months later, and the Tubu attacked the Turkish troops, while the Italians occupied the Fazan. A French column entered the Tibesti in early 1914 from Kawar, flouting an agreement with the Mai from the previous winter and forcing the Derde Chichai into exile. The region was at the heart of the dispute between the colonial powers, with the Italian Empire to the north and French West Africa to the south. During World War I, a Senussi revolt forced the Italians to temporarily withdraw from the Fazan and the northeastern part of the range. Mai Gedi Chanimami allied with the supporters of the Derde and led the resistance against the French troops until their withdrawal in 1916. The Tibesti was reconquered by the French colonial empire in 1929, and the region was placed under the administration of French Equatorial Africa. <laughs> Modern history Chadian Civil War Chad gained independence from France in 1960 and in 1965 the Chadian government led by François Tombalbé imposed its administrative and judicial authority in the Tibesti. Mere days after the withdrawal of French troops from the region rebellion erupted in Bardai, followed by numerous small-scale clashes over subsequent months and a more famous clash again in Bardai in September. In response, the Tombalbay government imposed travel and trade restrictions on the Tubu and voided the traditional power of the then Derde, Aude Kishidimi. Kishidimi went into exile in Libya the following year and became a national symbol in Chad for opposition to the government. These events were a direct trigger of the First Chadian Civil War, which lasted from 1965 to 1979. In 1968, the French army, at the request of Tombalbé, intervened in an attempt to put an end to the rebellion, killing 25 rebels and 121 civilians in various towns, including Zuur. However, the French leader of the intervention force, General Edouard Cordadelas, admitted that the Tibesti area was basically ungovernable, remarking, I believe we should draw a line below the Tibet Sea region and leave them to their stones. We can never subdue them. The French therefore concentrated its intervention to the center and the east of the country, leaving the Tibesti region area largely alone. In 1969, Gokoni Aude, a Teta leader, and Hissine Habre, a Daza leader, emerged from the Tibesti to form the Second Liberation Army, initially an arm of the National Liberation Front of Chad, but which later broke from the group due to its close relationship with Libya. In April 1974, the Second Liberation Army captured Bardai from the Chadian government and took hostage the French archaeologist Françoise Kloster, German doctor Christophe Stewen and Marc Coombe, an assistant to Kloster's husband, and held them in the mountains. Stewen's wife and two soldiers of the Chadian army were killed. The West German government quickly paid the ransom and Stewen was released. The French government sent the military officer Pierre Gallopin to negotiate with the rebels, but he was captured by the rebels and executed in April 1975. Marc Coombe was able to escape in May 1975. The remaining hostages were released in January 1977 in Tripoli after France acceded to the rebel's ransom demand. The hostage incident, known as L. A fair cluster served to further destabilize Chad. In 1976, the Second Liberation Army split into two factions, one affiliated with Libya and led by Gokoni, and the other led by Habre. In June 1977, Gokoni's forces attacked Chadian government strongholds in Bardai and Zuur, killing 300 government troops. Bardai surrendered to the rebels on July 4, while Zuur was evacuated. The government, led by Félix Malome since Tombalbay's overthrow in 1975, signed a peace agreement with Habre in 1978, although fighting with other rebel groups, many aligned with Libya, continued. <laughs> Chadian-Libyan conflict the Aouzou Strip in the Tibesti region was defined for the first time in the discussions between France and Italy after World War I, in relation to an award to Italy for the victory in that war. 
At the Paris Peace Conference, 1919, France agreed to give some Saharan territories to Italian Libya, the area around Aouyouzou in the Tibesti region. After many discussions during the 1920s, in 1935 the Franco-Italian agreement was signed between Benito Mussolini and Pierre Laval, which included a provision under which Italy would receive the Aouyouzou Strip, which was to be added to Libya. But the instruments of ratification of the Mussolini-Laval Treaty never were exchanged with France by the Italian parliament that wanted more territories. Despite this the new border was conventionally assumed to be the southern boundary of Libya until 1955, when the strip was returned to French Chad. In 1978, Chad and Libya came into conflict over the Aouzou Strip, a narrow, 114,000 square kilometer 44,000 square miles borderland that extends into the Tibesti region and is supposedly rich in uranium deposits. Prior to this, in 1972, the Chadian government under Tombalbe had ceded the strip to Libya in a secret agreement with Libya's leader Muammar Gaddafi. Following this agreement, Libya issued residents of the Aouzou Strip Libyan identification cards. Following Libya's withdrawal from southern Chad in 1982, Habre's armed forces of the North Fan took control of the entirety of Chad with the exception of the Tibesti, where Gokoni remained with his Libyan-backed government of national unity forces. Gokoni established a national peace government in Bardai and proclaimed it the legitimate government of Chad. Habre attacked the Gunt in the Tibesti in both December 1982 and January 1983 but was repelled on both occasions. Although fighting intensified over the next several months, the mountains remained under the control of the Gunt and Libyan forces. Tibesti War by 1986, following a series of military defeats, the Gunt had begun to disintegrate along with relations between Gokoni and Gaddafi. In August, Gokoni was arrested by the Libyans, which spurred his troops to attack Libyan positions in the Tibesti, forcing their withdrawal from the mountains. In October the remnant Gunt forces pledged themselves to Habre, Libya sought to retake Bardai and Zuur, and sent a task force of 2,000 troops with T-62 tanks and heavy support by the Libyan Air Force into the Tibesti. The offensive started successfully, expelling the Gunt from its key strongholds, aided by the use of napalm. The attack ultimately backfired, however, as it resulted in the prompt reaction of Habre, who sent 2,000 soldiers to support the Gunt forces. Although the Libyans were only partially repelled from the Tibesti, the campaign was a great strategic victory, as it transformed a civil war into a national war against a foreign invader, stimulating a sense of national unity never been seen before in Chad. After a series of defeats in northeastern Chad, Libyan forces withdrew fully from the Tibesti in March 1987. Although the Tibesti has since entered an era of relative peace, the years of conflict have left the area strewn with thousands of landmines. Topic: <laughs> Scientific exploration and research. Topic: Due to its isolation and geopolitical situation, the Tibesti Mountains were long unexplored by scientists. The German Gustav Nachtigl, dispatched by Otto von Bismarck, was the first European to explore, albeit with great difficulty, the Tibesti in 1869. Prior to Nachtigl's expedition, an American along with two missionaries had attempted to enter the Tibesti range, but were killed by a Tubu warrior. While Nachtigal provided an accurate description of the population, his account discouraged any new adventure into the Tibesti for over 40 years, as he was convicted by the Tubu of spying for Bismarck and only released after the intervention of Maya Rami Tedimi. Later expeditions carried out between 1920 and 1970 yielded valuable information on the geology and petrology of the range. The French anthropologist Charles Le Coeur and his wife Marguerite, a geographer, lived among the Teta of Tibesti between 1933 and 1935. Le Coeur was the first to closely study the Tibesti populace, but the outbreak of World War II prevented him from publishing his research. French Colonel Jean Chapelle published a book on the Tubu and their lifestyle in 1957. 
In 1965, the Free University of Berlin opened a geomorphological research station in Bardai. However, research at the station was interrupted several times due to the Chadian Civil War, and the station was ultimately closed in 1974. Although the Tibesti is one of the world's most significant examples of intracontinental volcanism, ongoing political instability and the presence of landmines means that, today, geologic research often must be conducted on the basis of satellite images and comparison with research on Martian volcanoes. Little public geologic research had been conducted in the Tibesti Mountains until the work of Gorgo and Vincent in 2004, however an expedition in 2015 sought to assess the feasibility of establishing a new geoscience research station in Bardai. Climbing history the first mountain to be climbed by a Westerner in the Tibesti was Pictisade in 1869 by Gustav Nachtigal during his exploration of the area, although the peak is not technically difficult. In 1938, Emi Kusi was summited by Wilfred Thesiger. The first sporting climb was probably that of the peak and needle of Batum, at 2,400 meters (7,900 feet) and 2,400 meters (7,900 feet), respectively, by a Swiss expedition led by Eduard Wyss Dunant in 1948. In 1957, P. R. Steele, R. F. Marx, and W. W. Tuck of the University of Cambridge embarked on an expedition to Tarso Tiroko, which Thesiger had described as probably the most beautiful peak in Tibesti, and which offered an interesting climbing opportunity. They started at the Wadi Ybbu Bo and hired guides and camels for the three-day journey. Following a week of exploring the southern flank of the mountain and climbing the two peaks situated on a ridge to the north, they attempted to summit Tiroko from their camp at Wadi Modra. After ascending to an elevation of 3,200 meters (10,500 feet), just 61 meters (200 feet) from the summit, they were faced with a vertical, crumbling rock wall, and thus were forced to descend. Following this defeat, they took the opportunity to climb Emi Kusi, 19 years after its first ascent by Thesiger, and also pick Wubu, a prominent spire located between Bardai and Auzu. In 1962, the Swiss René Dittert and Robert Grelos scaled O Obu, a 1,640 metres peak. In 1963, an Italian expedition led by Guido Manzino ascended Torre Anomanata, a 970 metres 3,180 feet Aguil of Sisse, west of Tarso to Sade. In 2005, Bhikkhu Bidi was scaled by Englishman Eamon Ginge, Fullen and Chadian guides. Due to the unstable political situation, the Alpine conquest of the Tibesti Mountains remains very much incomplete. Economy Topic Topic Natural Resources Topic The Tibesti and its surroundings could contain significant quantities of uranium, tin, tungsten, niobium, beryllium, lead, zinc, copper, platinum, and nickel. Gold, diamonds, and emeralds have been found in small quantities. The natron extracted from true O natron on Tarso to Sade is used as a food supplement for animals. The Soborum geothermal field, the name of which means water cure, is known to locals for its medicinal qualities. The 42 degrees Celsius 108 degrees Fahrenheit pools are rumored to cure dermatitis and rheumatism after several days of soaking. The Yarik Hot Spring is rich in natural gas, its water temperature ranges between 22 and 88 degrees Celsius 72 and 190 degrees Fahrenheit. .Other than a nearby oasis, Mer de Zawi and its surroundings are rarely visited. However, there are numerous small oases on the plains of Borku, near Emi Kusi, which are extensively exploited. It is thought that water flows underground from the southern Tibesti Mountains and then emerges in these springs. Agriculture The oases to the west and north of the range have the easiest access. Where mosquitoes do not abound, they support several villages, such as Zuur, where indigenous plant species have largely been replaced by some 56,000 date palms for the production of dates. These are harvested between late July and early August. In winter, when reserves are depleted, it is not uncommon for the cores of the dates and the fiber of the palms to be ground into a paste and consumed. 
These palm groves can also grow millet and corn, but the crop is spotty and sometimes swept away by early flooding. The banks of the Enaris grow desert gourd Citrullus which are collected in October to extract the bitter seeds which, after being washed, are ground to make flour. Horticulture is practiced on a small scale using traditional irrigation methods. Goats and, more rarely, sheep number 50,000 heads, and 8,000 camels and 7,000 donkeys are raised in the range. Chickens are also numerous, although the consumption of meat is rare, usually done so through salting. Most animals spend the winter on the plateaus or in the high valleys. They descend into the lower valleys in February, just after the sowing of wheat, and then return in June to allow harvest. In total, including barley, the Tibesti produces 300 tons, 330 short tons of cereals each year, which are mainly consumed in the form of cakes dogo and pancakes fodak and complemented with wild grasses. Women are responsible for gathering wild grains on the tarsos in August. Fishing is possible in the water holes. On the plains of Borku, some fields are irrigated, where cattle, goats and camels can drink. Despite the date palm plantations, native species remain, such as the dome palm the baka, from which the sweet bark is collected, ground and consumed, despite its low nutritional value. Agricultural product is traded once a year in exchange for fabrics. Tourism Tibesti has tourism potential, with its primary attractions being the palm groves, rock and parietal art, canyons, basalt spires, volcanoes and hot springs. However, the Zuur airfield cannot accommodate aircraft with more than a 20-seat capacity. This pushes the cost of air tickets from N. Jemina up to 60% of the cost to fly from in. Jemina to major European cities. Furthermore, tourist accommodations are virtually absent. As a result, the majority of tourists, most of whom are German, enter Libya, purchase all-terrain vehicles or caravans on the spot, and then cross the border into Chad. Thus, the economic benefits to Chad amount to only around €100 Euros per tourist. The presence of numerous landmines is a danger to tourists, and thus hiking is generally limited to the southern end of the range. The ascent up Emi Kusi, around the Era Kohor, and then on to Yiyera Hot Springs generally takes about three days. The volcano has been climbed by 100 Westerners since 1957. Topic. Conservation Topic. A protected area in the Tibesti Range has been proposed to preserve the area's rim gazelle and Barbary sheep populations, which are the largest in the world. The protected area would be modeled after the Wadi Rime Wadi Akim Fonal Reserve to the south, however, there is currently insufficient funding available for the project. Culture the Tibesti Mountains are renowned for their rock and parietal art. Around 200 engraving sites, including some 1800 different representations, and 100 painting sites have been identified. Most date from between the 5th and 3rd millennia BC, although some date from the 6th millennium BC, centuries before the arrival of the Tubu. The art has suffered the effects of time, including weathering from sand blown by the wind. The earliest works often portray animals that have since died out due to climate change in the Tibesti, including elephants, rhinoceros, hippopotamus and giraffes. More recent art includes ostriches and antelopes, which have an exceptional presence on the edge of the range, as well as gazelles and sheep, which are more common. Later works, dated less than 2,000 years old, portray domesticated animals, such as oxen and camels. Other engravings portray warriors, known as Aoza, dressed in feathers or spiked ornaments and armed with bows, shields, asagai, or traditional knives. Some portray dance scenes. The walls of a canyon near Bardai have engravings that measure over 2 meters 6 feet 7 in, in height, including that of the Man of Gonoa, Gonoa being the name of the inari that runs through the valley. These primarily show hunting scenes. The paintings, often drawn with a red Faderbia albida base, signify a turn towards domestication in the Tibesti, because the scenes are more pastoral. The Tibesti art is unique in the Sahara because of the absence of inscriptions, the relative lack of chariots, and the low representation of camels and horses until comparatively recently. 
The art has remained important to the Tubu. Around 1200 AD, a man named Yerbu engraved a palm leaf into rock, symbolizing his love for a married woman. In 1989, French painter and sculptor Jean Verame used the natural surroundings of the EHI Cornet, a few kilometers south of Bardi, to create multidimensional land art works by painting rocks. The project was supported by the Chadian President and the United Nations Development Programme, as well as private corporations such as the French oil company Total SA. Over time, the Klein blue paint turned patina white and red, and today is pinkish in color. The volcanic spires of the Tibesti, along with a stylized sheep's head, were displayed on a 20 CFA franc postage stamp issued by Republic of Chad in 1961. The Tibesti range was featured in the 1966 short story, La Mura di Anagor, The Walls of Anagor, by the Italian novelist Dino Bazzati. In the story, a local guide offers to show a traveler the walls of a great city that is absent from the maps. The city is exceedingly opulent, yet exists in total autarky and does not submit to local authority. The traveler waits many years, in vain, to enter the Tibesti city. Topic. See also Topic. Geography of Chad Geography of Libya Air Mountains Hagar Mountains Topic. Notes and references Topic. Topic. Notes Topic. Topic. References Topic. Topic. Bibliography Topic. Topic. External links Topic. Information on climbing, with map Information about the mountains, with images Tibesti Region Terrestrial Ecoregions. World Wildlife Fund Travel page with photos in German Report of a recent 2014 expedition to the Tibesti